Designing a house of cards has never been easier in House of Cardan on Film Threat Reviews. Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zoriana Kitt, and today we're talking about House of Cardan. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment about the movie uh, below. Uh, House of Cardan uh, is the story of famed designer Pierre Cardan. Pierre Card. What? You know, do you want me to just take over for you, Alan? Yeah. Why, why don't I just, you know, why don't I just take it from here and say it's okay. Pierre Cardin? Pierre Cardin. Cardin, you don't pronounce the N. Uh, you want to do that? So it's Pierre Cardin, Alan. Okay. And as a child who grew up in the 80s, by that time, that was a name that was on everything. It was already kind of watered down, but still in the back of my head, I understood that this was someone who was a special designer of some sort because his name was on everything. But this documentary, to me, was actually very revelatory. There were so many bombshells for me here. First of all, I had no idea that Pierre Cardin wasn't even French. He's Italian. Like That was like the biggest takeaway for me. I had no idea. And secondly, this guy was so ahead of his time. I mean, first of all, his models were multicultural from the get-go. Like back, even back then, you know, he he had this models from Japan. He had African American models. It was incredible the diversity that he had. And secondly, branding. This was something no one was doing today. Oh my God, we have Kim Kardashian's name is on like on everything. I mean, everyone starts building these empires and just putting their names on things. I mean, hip hop artist Travis Scott recently announced that he's now like a McDonald's Happy Meal. Like that's how much today branding is important. But Pierre Cardin, he became a brand. He was more than just a fashion designer. His name went on everything, furniture, houseware, even cars and airplanes. He branded himself to the horror of the fashion industry at that time. We thought it was just so gauche and so revolting to do that. But he was so forward thinking that he, he was the pioneer in branding. I mean, I could go on and on about how many yeah. things he pioneered, but the, the, the guy's amazing and he's still alive today. He's 98 years old. He owns restaurants and theater spaces and museums and he's just got such a diversified portfolio for yeah. for a fashion designer yeah what's funny is we're both children of the 80s and my knowledge of him is very limited um and, and that's probably by the fact that maybe because i'm a guy and maybe i didn't have that kind of money to to spend or to even care about that world so so i come to this story as uh, fairly fresh because i'm um, you know, I've heard of the name before. Clearly, I can't pronounce it. Um, <laughs> so, so you know, this this documentary is definitely out of my wheelhouse, and and I did find him fascinating. Uh, just the fact that you know you do get the sense by the way people are talking that he was forward thinking, that he was never looking at current trends and designing around that, but he was actually looking to the future of what of what um, design and in terms of fashion. You know, you talked about industrial design. He was the forward-thinking designer, which was pretty amazing. And, and I did also catch the, you know, that he was one of the few design, one of the few Westerners really to go into China in the in the yeah. 80s yeah. and, and bring right. fashion. Well, yeah, into the Soviet Union, which was also a, a big deal. Also, he, he, you know, at that time, fashion was considered um, very exclusive. All these designers at the time, uh, they were, uh, they, they made these uh, collections that were uh, that were inaccessible. Yes, exactly. They were they were uh, unreachable to the masses. You had to be very rich. And uh, Cardin's motto was that fashion should be accessible to everybody. So when he launched a collection in the department store. I mean, again, the fashion world just went up in arms when he decided to create men's fashion as opposed to just women's fashion that fashion was geared to. Again, people were just like they couldn't believe it. I mean, I mean, his uh, collarless suits were made famous by the Beatles who yeah. uh, wore them when they, they were on the television show, right? That, yes, that, exactly. Yeah. 
And then um, he also, glasses used to be just functional and he is credited with making them fashionable. And uh, he created a fashion aspect to glasses and James Bond wore them in one of the films. So the guy really was uh, uh, definitely ahead of his time. And it's something that we take for granted today. But in this case, this documentary is very, very important because we should know how things came to be they, the way they are today. We should know our history and we should give credit to those that came before us and laid the foundation down for the life that we know and have today. And Pierre Cardin is definitely one such person that does deserve to get credit for everything that he has accomplished and we should pay respects to him. Yeah. Yeah, and, okay, so I'll, I would agree with you. Um, you know, I, I've said it in previous reviews that biopics are made mostly to, uh, to bring posterity, to, to tell a story for posterity's sake so that the, the stories don't go away. And, and we have the capabilities now to, to tell these stories uh, in film and in document, uh, documentaries. Um, although I will say um, I felt, you know, like I said, I come I come to this film very fresh, you know, just there to learn something new, and I did feel like um, one is that this documentary leaned uh, more heavily toward the man, the life of the man, um, and the greatness of the man versus balancing it off with the work of the man. I, you know, there there is a lot of his design, and we do get a lot of uh, you know get a lot of, a, a broad glimpse of what he's done, but it just did feel very interview heavy. Um, well, you know, it it was co-directed by these two uh, directors who are huge fans of Cardin. They have a huge Cardin collection. They actually own one of his branded cars, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. I mean, this was going to be a fawning. I mean, it's not. Oh, I don't find it fawning, but it, I mean, but of course, it was going to be positive. Um, because they are fans of his. And of course they interview a lot of people who work at his various um, design houses or uh, factories or restaurants and they're employees of his. So of course they're not gonna say anything negative about well, that. I'm not saying security. that. Yeah, I'm not saying that I wanna hear necessarily negative things about him, but I do, what I do want in an, in an art documentary is art. Um, along with the story behind the art, and I just really felt like it was it was here's here's Pierre, uh, here's how great he is, here's how really great he is, here's how you know people talking about his greatness, but I did want to see much more of of the art, so to speak, within this documentary, and and that's my personal feeling. It's just just slight off balance there. I will also say that this documentary has my biggest bugaboo about subtitles. Um, it was frustrating throughout the entire documentary, and, and it's it's light colored subtitles against light backgrounds. Um, they used a very light yellow subtitle with a very faint black uh, light outline around it, and it was very hard to read. Uh, that that's one thing about subtitles is at this point now I'm focused so focused on the subtitles I'm missing what's on the rest of the screen. Well, I I wish I could go back and notice that, but because I do understand French, because I uh, <laughs> grew up in Canada. Yeah. It, it wasn't something that I was looking at or paying attention to, but but I, I understand that frustration because I have seen that in documentaries and that uh, in certain documentaries that has stood out for me, which is which is very frustrating. So uh, yeah. I'm sorry that that was, uh, <laughs> that that all, was- All I'm saying is for future filmmakers, uh, a darker outline, black outline around the letters would, would do you so much good. <laughs> All right. So what's your rating for this, Alan? Are you going to give it an eight out of no. 10? Oh, you're giving it an eight out of 10? No, no. I'm asking you. If you were, Are you going to give it an eight out of 10? No, I'm actually giving it a six out of 10. What? Um, really? Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I, you know, I want my... I want my art documentaries to be about art and um, and less about history, um, or or I should say that better. Uh, it should really be a balance. And then the subtitles, you know, those are kind of burned into the print at this point, so yeah. there's not a lot of they can change about that. And you know, I now I'm, I'm I'm I was just really digging in, and so some technical problems, some balance issues, uh, just gave it a bare recommendation for me. Huh. Well, I I gave it an eight because I love 
how this documentary put the fashion scene in a historical context with his accomplishments. And I found myself afterwards going on Wikipedia and, and looking up certain names and products and things that were in the documentary because I, to me, I just learned so much that I didn't know. And, uh, I, I quite enjoyed it very much. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess unfortunately, it, it's it's that level of interest. In, you know, maybe I'm just not as excited about fashion as as you are. And, you know, and you know, that's that's my opinion. All right. So with that, um, be sure to visit filmthreat.com for more news reviews on independent films. And with that, let's get out of here. <laughs>